coming up. Some terriers go for gold, while a few others get a call to the hall. And the legacies keep on coming. It's all next on BU Terriers All Access. College hockey traditionally shuts down over the annual winter break, but for some members of the Boston University hockey team, it was anything but quiet. As several players were selected to play for their home countries in some tournaments you may have heard of. Yeah, we're fortunate to have uh, the type of players that our country wants to represent them, and not only our country, but Canada and Finland and Sweden over the last three or four years. And, you know, the NHL Network has done such a great job uh, highlighting the World Junior Tournament in particular that it's brought it to a whole new level. It's a really fun tournament to be a part of. You know, I think it's probably the coolest junior hockey tournament in the world and um, definitely a fun thing to be a part of. Whenever you have the chance to wear the USA jersey, it's just a huge privilege and a huge honor. So. To have that opportunity, it was, it was an awesome experience and I was really glad uh, and fortunate to be on the team. <laughs> it, was, it was fun, especially against the U.S., uh, playing against uh, Harper and, and Brady and then Otter. Every time we were on the ice together, we'd be either in each other's faces laughing and uh, kind of chirping each other. As Brady said, we chirped a little bit for each other and <laughs> he actually sweared to me in Finnish. I've been uh, like making him learn Finnish words, so he gave them back to me at that game, so that was kind of... Funny. One of the biggest moments at this year's World Juniors was the tournament's first ever outdoor game between the U.S. and Canada at a packed New Era Stadium in Buffalo, New York. Not surprisingly, the BU contingent had a huge impact on this one. 3-2 Canada on top. Team USA ties things up. It's Brady Kachuk. You know, probably one of the coolest games I've ever been a part of, and um, you know, the most important part of a game like that is getting the win and. You know, so definitely a memory I'll have for the rest of my life. It was really fun to play against Fabro and play outside and have the snow coming down and stuff like that. So it was a really cool experience. I think it was 45, 47,000 people. Snow falling, and obviously fans cheering, and we're playing Canada versus the, the U.S. So it's, uh, I don't think you can ask for anything else. And now Kachuk will shoot for Team USA, trying to give them a 2 nothing lead. Kachuk is... And a goal in the shootout to make it 2 0. It was a big game for our team because we lost the day before to Slovakia. So, um, you know, it was a huge win for us and really needed that uh, that win. So, that was the, the most important part. They were in, missed it, and the United States has won it. The United States trailed by two twice and wins it in a shootout. Although Team USA was victorious in this game, the tournament was far from over. Dante Fabro and Team Canada would ultimately have their moment. It's a World Junior win in Buffalo! I was very happy for him. Yeah, I obviously hate the Swedes coming from Finland, so so I was 100% rooting for Canada. I'm happy. You know, I can't, we we kind of took it from him last year, you know, and it kind of hurt him a little bit last year when five or six of us were over there coming back with gold medals and, and he was the only one with the silver. I'm sure he's disappointed some of the guys that walked around with their gold medals last year aren't here anymore, but he's such a great kid and he's a great player and you know was instrumental in that team winning the gold medal and uh, I was really happy for him. It's probably the first time I really rooted for Canada in my life. <laughs> You know, growing up, the World Juniors is the biggest hockey tournament in Canada. Like, each Canadian looks for each holiday season, and it's something that when you win it, it's you're a Canadian legend. So, like, to be able to like watch Fabs go out there and play the way he did, and like, it was outstanding to see him actually be able to win that. You wake up every Christmas, and obviously, it's it's World Junior time, and it's a huge sporting event, and. It's definitely obviously one I, I dreamed of playing in and getting that gold was I, I remember hugging my family after and like we were we were all shocked. Like it was it was a it was an unbelievable moment and really, really happy for him and his family. He's got such a good family and um, so I was happy that they got to share that experience. After the the final buzzer rang, like I like, skated over to like where they were sitting with the cop. My mom <laughs> my mom had tears in her face, which was uh, pretty normal at that, for, for that kind of thing. It's one of those moments uh, I don't think I, I, I can forget for sure. I knew everyone coming to the tournament. They were my best friends and, and that's also kind of the, the sad part that national team junior career is over and, and especially the way it ended. The feed in front, not the deflection, it goes in. I think it was Harper that put it home. We really wanted gold but now we're just cherishing the opportunity we had and 
you know, to share the bronze medal with Jake and Patrick, you know, re really good buddies of mine. So it was just to share that the whole experience with all those guys is something we'll, we'll all never forget. You know, I think it showed a lot about the type of guys that we had in the room and, you know, bounce back after such a, you know, heartbreaking loss to Sweden and be able to kind of regroup and refocus and, uh, you know, sh have a really good showing uh, the next day in the bronze medal game and ultimately uh, win another medal for uh, the USA. While BU players were making their mark on the World Juniors, senior captain Brandon Hickey was traveling to Davos, Switzerland to represent Canada in the world's oldest invitational hockey tournament, the Spangler Cup. It's a pretty insane little place there. You know, you kind of have to weave through all these mountains and mountain ranges to get there. And then once you're there, it's in, it's in between, like it's in this valley in between two mountains and sold out every game no matter who was playing. And it just seemed like they were a bunch of hockey fans. Like they weren't cheering for one particular team. They're just, whenever someone would score, they'd go nuts. So it was a pretty cool environment to be a part of. It's pretty special, you know, you're representing not only like your family, and your hometown, but also like your entire country, which is something that, you know, you gotta take pride in. When you do win, like it was unbelievable. All the families stormed the ice and you know, we got to you know, hand around the trophy and take pictures and you know, it was really cool to have my dad out there with me and gave him my medal and stuff and got to take pictures of the trophy. So it was a pretty cool experience. Last but certainly not least, BU will be well represented at the world's biggest and most prestigious hockey tournament, the Winter Olympics. Joining Jordan are John McCarthy and Matt Gilroy, who were captains on BU's 2009 national championship team and Chris Borg, son of Bruins legend Ray Borg. And obviously I was honored, you know, it's a pretty, you know, it's on, it's on a pretty big stage, you know, I just want to do everything I could to be on that team, you know, and something I honestly couldn't be more excited for. You know, the World Juniors uh, last year, winning the gold medal in Canada, um, I can't even imagine, you know, winning a gold medal in South Korea for the Olympics, you know, something that I don't really think has really hit me yet something that I hope happens here within the next, you know, month and a half or so. Coming up, the 45th class of the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame inducts three BU hockey legends. Stay with us. This past December, the USA Hockey Hall of Fame held its annual induction ceremony in Boston, and there was a very strong Boston University flavor. Among the honorees were Ben Smith, Scott Young, and legendary BU head coach, Jack Parker. Well, it's, it is quite an honor. It's one of the joys of my life to be coming in with the, with the group I'm coming in with as well. So it's not only is it getting inducted, but it's getting inducted with this class is really special. Scott Young skated for BU from 1985 to 1987, then went on to play for Team USA multiple times and had a lengthy NHL career that included two Stanley Cups. Well, Scotty was certainly a great player at BU. He only, only played for us for two years, then he went in the Olympic team. He was one of the great Olympians, who uh, played three, three different Olympiads. NHL player for I think 17 years, one of the top American scorers in the history of the NHL. So he's, he was a great player. Jack Parker is the type of guy when I see, I kind of light up a little bit. You know, I always love talking to him. I consider him a friend. Uh, I loved playing for him. He's such an intelligent guy. He was so motivating as a coach when I played for him. I'm really proud that he's getting inducted, but I'm really proud of his career ever since he came to BU and then what happened to him after he left BU. It's an incredible feeling uh, because I know the, the history of USA Hockey. I feel like that I was part of a group that really grew with USA Hockey. It's really a special feeling. Ben Smith was an assistant coach at BU for nine seasons under Jack Parker before moving on to be a head coach at Northeastern, followed by coaching three US Olympic women's teams meddling each time. Well, the thing with Jack goes back, you know, almost 50 years. We were playing against each other in high school. He was a Mormon Catholic, I was at Gloucester High, and then we went on to college and we played against each other. And then I got into coaching and I coached against him and I think, Jesus, I'm sick and tired of getting beaten by this guy. In 1981, I moved over from Yale to become his assistant and, you know, we struck up a pretty good hockey relationship and probably a better friendship. When I got called by Pat Kelleher to tell me that I was inducted in the Hall of Fame, he told me not to tell anybody, I said, yeah, okay. But I had to call Ben, I thought it was real important for me to talk, talk to Ben. I said, you know, I just want to tell you, I just got a call, we're getting inducted in the Hall of Fame, and I wanted to tell you, I don't think it would have happened without you, I wanted to thank you. And then he said to me, well, right back at you, I'm not supposed to tell anybody either, but I'm getting inducted as well, and this wouldn't have happened if I wasn't at BU for nine years. While Smith, Young, and Parker all share a Boston University heritage, they also share something else, a true love for the game of hockey. I think the thing that's, that's different in this sport than any other, it's, it's always been a bit parochial, and everybody knows everybody, and everybody's. And we all grew up together, playing against each other. That's how we got to get in the game. That's different than most sports, I think. 
you know, working with great athletes has been an ob obviously uh, tremendous uh, re rewarding experience. And, and whether it's male or female, I know that I've been around some of the great athletes in the sport over the last uh, 30 or 40 years and been around some of the best coaches too. So that's really been a wonderful opportunity for me. You know, when you're done with hockey, you've learned so much. And to be able to pass that along to younger players and you're helping them along the path to the NHL, it, it's invaluable. It's, it's such a great uh, feeling to be able to help players. And it's a genuine, you know, we don't do it for ourselves anymore. We do it for the players. And that's what's special about it. Shorthanded chance for BU, in and they score! Clayton Keller does what Clayton Keller can do. Arizona Coyotes are pleased to select from the U.S. National Development Program, Clayton Keller. Clayton Keller was drafted seventh overall in 2016 before he ever took the ice at BU. So even as a freshman, expectations were very high, but turns out so was the learning curve. I think just uh, to get stronger and develop little things in my game, D zone, just little things like that. Quinny was real hard on me, so the biggest transition I think is the speed. I think uh, college is very similar to the NHL and um, a lot of pace, a lot of, a lot of strong, big, fast players. It was, it was good to get stronger in the weight room. Ask you try to rip one, put it front and scoring is Clayton Keller. His first National Hockey League goal at home, baby. While Clayton only played one season at BU before moving on to NHL success, he loved his time as a Terrier. Now Keller, Keller in tight quarters, in front of the goal, Bobo Carpenter. Coach Quinn is a real good guy, he's a real good coach, and I mean, it's not hard to get someone to come out here, and um, I, mean, I think any guy that comes here, they, they want to go here. I love the campus, and uh, I think from day one, I, this is the place that I was going, so um, I'm just really happy that I came here. Despite playing just a single season of college hockey, Clayton's BU experience, an elite program, top-notch facilities, plus great coaches and teammates, all prepared him for playing in the NHL. The beam bow is real cool, and um, obviously, that anytime you get to play at that rink, it's, it's really special. Back on Carlson, got it on goal. Rebound, Keller, and he scores! Ah! It's good to have other guys that came to BU and um, that are in the NHL. It's kind of good to talk to Charlie every now and then, and um, he's a good friend of mine, so it's, it's cool to have that relationship. Clayton Keller pulls up just inside the blue line. Looks like he's found a new spring. Great pass! They score! Boston University is moving on. Charlie McAvoy with the game winner. I think just being around the guys all the time that kind of um, played with a couple years before that and just kind of knowing the whole team uh, really well since you were little. And I think uh, just anytime you get to come out here and, and play on this rink on a Friday or Saturday night, uh, it's a lot of fun and um, something that I miss. Get over the line. Max Holes and Keller with a goal! Clayton Keller, second of the night. Oh, the kid has it humming here tonight. Coming up, we'll meet freshman Kasper Kotkinsalo, the defenseman journeyed from his native Finland to become a Terrier. His story is next. Shane Bowers from Heron Cove, Nova Scotia. Well, the nickname that I get is Shane O. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty basic, just throwing O on the end of it. Pre-game rituals, always tape my stick, coffee, always shower at the same time. I used to wear the same suit all the time last year, but my favorite superhero is Batman. If I could be any animal, I would be a lion. They're the king of the jungle. I think that they're pretty, pretty strong, pretty powerful. My biggest pet peeve is probably people chewing with their mouth open. The type of music playing in my head so right now, a little bit of everything. It kind of depends on the mood. Easy come, easy go, will you let me go? What makes me laugh the most is just being at the rink every day, you hear some pretty funny things that you can't help but laugh at. My favorite sport other than hockey is lacrosse. If I could eat only one meal for the rest of my life, it would probably be something home cooked by my grandmother, probably. One thing I can't go there, though, would definitely be my phone. Ooh, my favorite fast food chain, probably Chick-fil-A. <laughs> if I had a warning label, mine would probably say, I don't know, strong accent maybe. <laughs> If you want to be one of the top college hockey programs in the country, you need to recruit the best players in the world. So say hello to freshman defenseman Kasper Kotkinsalo from Espo, Finland. I, I think I started when I was like five years old and I was very brutal at the beginning. 
for sure. But uh, I just always loved the game. I really did love the game. I was so happy going to practice. And for me, there wasn't like anyone kind of pushing for me. Like my dad never played hockey growing up or anything. So I was like first in my family to play hockey. So I got to figure like the love for the game basically by myself. After finding success as a player in Finland, Casper came to the USHL to further his career and pursue his dream of playing college hockey. And he was well prepared, both on the ice and off. We started like speaking English in the first grade already, pretty much in Finland. So I've always speak it, you know, when I started growing up. So, but I, I can still, still sometimes tell it's a little bit hard, but like it's getting better. This year I can tell it's been so much easier. Like now that I'm, I'm used to it, and and like. And I've, I've made so many friends already here, so that it feels like another home. I came to visit here and I fell in love with the city. All the facilities we have here and the style of play we play here and, and the coaches. In the end, it was like basically a gut decision like for me. Like I just, I just knew I, I wanted to come here and, and I've been very happy with it so far. He's a guy that can play in the National Hockey League. He's a big kid, he's strong, he can skate, he's got a good head for the game, he's got good vision, he shoots it hard. He just needs time. I don't think he realizes sometimes how good he actually is. You know, the more success he has at this level, I think that confidence will come, and once that happens, I think uh, you're going to see a heck of a player. Coach Quinn isn't the only one who believes in the big defenseman. The Detroit Red Wings selected him in the third round of the 2017 NHL entry level draft. And at BU, Casper knows he has all the tools he needs to get to the next level. I think everything, eating, sleeping, training, everything obviously on ice. I try to work on my, my shot and my skating and, and all the skills. I think overall just I have to come bigger, stronger and faster. And like I think BU is the best place for me to be like get to the next level with the strength and condition coaches we have. I have everything here to make myself an NHL player. Up next, we'll catch up with freshman forward Brady Kachuk, who proudly followed in the footsteps of his dad, Keith, and is making his mark at BU. A lot of players have suited up for Boston University over the years, but not many have the bloodlines of freshman forward Brady Kachuk brother of the Calgary Flames, Matthew, and son of NHL legend and BU alum, Keith Kachuk. Whenever you know he had free time at the rink, he'd bring us. Whenever they just had a practice in the morning, we'd go out there before Matthew and I, and then after practice, we'd hop back on. We'd be on the ice with like TJ Oshie, Alex Petrangelo, and just some of those guys, and they'd just be having fun out there with us while Matthew and I were doing shootouts on each other. We got so competitive with one another, and I think that's really helped us to where we're at. We hate to lose, so, I mean, I lost a lot when I was a kid. Johnny Gaudreau. Side of the goal, front, the Chuck scores. Yes, growing up playing hockey against an NHL star like Matthew was tough, but Brady now has a true role model and mentor in his older brother. Or just being close with him, just seeing uh, you know, how he operates uh, you know, at the rank. He just tells me two things every day, going into practice and games, just compete and be a good teammate. I learned a lot from him and from my dad, just how he treated the trainers, the coaches, his fellow players. Uh, to learn stuff from both of them, it's, it's, it's definitely awesome. Moved over to Amani. Amani with Kachuk trailing. Kachuk goes in, he scores! I've known Ty for for a while now. As kids, we'd, we'd grow up and hang out together. We're actually sitting together in the locker room, so it's just kind of funny to see that. It's kind of special for even Chad, Chad Chris, just to have his dad on that same team. It's, it's kind of funny to see, and now we're all on the same team. And what a memorable night for Mark Chris, number seven, the senior from Timmins, Ontario. Back in 1990-91, the BU Terriers had players named Chris, Amonte, and Kachuk, leading them to a Hockey East championship. Now, almost 30 years later, that legacy continues. I mean, I have definitely loved BU from a young age for, for my dad when he played here. Also, the Coach Quinn and the, the coaching staff, the facilities here. I think they're the, they're the best in college hockey, so it was an easy, easy decision for me. And then my whole dad's side's from like Medford, Charlestown, so just to see them every Sunday and have a home-cooked meal, it's, um, you know, it's, it was an easy choice for me. No matter how good a player he is now, or how good his genes are, Brady knows he has to keep getting better if he wants to win in Hockey East. Every team's a good team. It's, it's, there's no easy night. Um, you got to bring your A game every night, and uh, you know, there's some big, strong guys out there, very skilled guys. So I mean. Like I said, it's every game's a tough game. 
for me, it's just my biggest thing is just get better every day and you know, try to get on the ice extra, work on my skills, my shot. And, and then in the weight room, we have Ben Prentiss and Kyle Check, unbelievable guys. And I think I've, I've definitely gotten a lot stronger and I, I feel like I can, I can get even more stronger. So I'm just really excited um, you know, for the, for the second half of the year. And a shot on it here, rebound, score! Just like that, Brady Kachuk and the Terriers take the lead. Winter break is officially over. The first half of the season has been a struggle for the Terriers. A surprise to both the college hockey world and Coach Quinn. Well, the plans are to play more winning hockey. I mean, we just, we feel like we're so close. If you'd ever told me before the season started we'd have this record, I would have laughed. I think we're just all excited to get back. I mean, the first half was obviously pretty frustrating, but um, I think when, when you look back at things, it was definitely a good lear learning experience for you know, the entire team. Trailer, Chris, Rister, foul! Chad Chris on the follow up! Sometimes you gotta go through these situations in order to be a better hockey team, and you know, there's still plenty of time to acquire these characteristics that you need to have success. Greenway, shifting far circle and a goal! Jordan Greenway. We can't we can't take any more games for granted, and we need to finish out games. And uh, you know it's definitely going to make for exciting hockey. And I know uh, our team's up to the challenge. Bobo Carpenter, Carpenter now racing it over the line. Rister and a goal, Bobo Carpenter. Our guys feel confident for sure, um, but we certainly know that there's an it needs to be an urgency uh, in everything we do. You got to take advantage of every opportunity to get better, and if we do that, I know success will follow.